I did not kill the storekeeper and take his money. I meant that I haven't got an alibi. I like to get out and I like to walk in the woods and I got permission from my neighbors to do so. And they own over 20 acres of land, so uh, naturally I don't walk by the house every time that I decide to take a walk. But I like to get out to myself. And I meant that I was a regular customer at that store. Mr. Freeman, he was a real good man. And I'd stop by and give me a Pepsi, maybe a snack when I got off work. I'd enjoy hearing the farmers come in, just tell about uh, how the day went, how the crops were doing. Maybe some conflict with possibly a neighbor or another farmer. It's really interesting. So I meant that I was a regular hangout at the store. I guess that would make me a prime suspect. And I mean, it's not that many people were out there at this length, this county. We well, really cuts down to odds. It don't change the fact there's a mistaken identity because I didn't do it. And uh, on my behalf, I'm a student of American history, and all the way from biblical times up through the 1800s, they wore their hair a lot like this. Wild Bill Hecock, Buffalo Bill, and they were just a few. I was taught in school that they'd put a bowl over their head and how long and how short would depend on the size of the bowl. So what I'm saying, I'm not out of date. I'm just living the way they did a hundred years ago. Or more. I want to ask you one question. Did you take the money after you killed him? I haven't killed anybody or taken their money. It don't make anything what I say. It looks like y'all gonna believe what you want. But I'm not the you're telling me is that it's not looking that good. What it all amounts to is that they want a conviction. They want to solve this case. Now you're a good scapegoat. And uh, well, uh, it looks bad. This looks bad. In other words, what you're telling me is it's just a no-win situation. I haven't got a witness. I haven't got one person to clear my whereabouts. Well, it don't change the fact that I like to get out, get to myself, walk. And the people on this property, they gave me permission to walk on the land. I don't have to check with them. And, well, I don't even know the, this home at that time. And even if they were, I mean, 
when I go in through the wooded area, I mean, they wouldn't know why I was there or not. All I'm saying is I got permission to walk, walk on the land. It's really sad that you're in the situation that you're in. I mean, uh, that Saxton woman, she's accused of killing her husband, a judge, and he didn't show lynch. You know, it's a pity that uh, this Saxton woman has to die in the electric chair. It looked like they could have been more lenient on her than they had. I mean, even the first degree murder rap. Looks like they could gave her prison without parole. I mean, she'd killed before. Or maybe I got understand it. But, um, uh, it looks bad. I feel for this woman. I feel for her. Well, I'd rather be shot in the back rather than die in the electric chair. And on the days following, was placed on trial for the murder of John Saxton in the said county of this state on the fourth day of December, and upon said trial was found guilty of murder in the first degree for said killing. And on the 18th day of April, was sentenced to be put to death in the manner provided by the law on some day in the week, beginning the 15th day of August. Now, it is hereby ordered that execution on the said sentence be done upon said Ethel Saxton by you, the said agent and warden of the state prison in the manner provided by the law. On such day of the week, beginning on the 15th day of August, as you shall determine, within the walls of your said prison, or the yard, or enclosure thereto adjoining. What you're telling me is that you're going to try to keep the trial going long enough to set up an escape plan for me. That uh, there's no way that I'll be cleared in a court of law by the jury. Look, Mr. Ron, as your lawyer, all I can do to save you is set up an escape plan. I'll try to keep the trial going on long enough that uh, possibly uh, it'll give you a chance to escape. Now, I have a car sitting in the alley every day of the trial. And uh, you can make up your mind where you want to be shot in the back or down the electric chair. There's a chance that you could escape. Well, Lawyer Wilson, I know you've studied all the elements. You know that I worked out self-defense uh, as a child, as a hobby, more than anything else, but it could be enough to get me by if uh, the opposition is not that good. And I'd rather be shot down than be strapped in a chair and die that way. Maybe the element of surprise. Maybe I can go uh, charging out that uh, courtroom door. Maybe even if uh, 
the officers try to shoot me, they might hit a bystander. I might give me all the lead that I need. It's worth a chance. What I'm saying, uh, Mr. Riker, when we make that plan for escape, these officers guarding you, they're green. They haven't had any spears. Now, what we're banking on, them hesitate. Hesitate just enough for you to escape. Now, when you make that dash to the front door of the court, Maybe these people see a madman coming at them, they might get out of your way. But if somebody wants to be a hero and rest them standing behind, well, you'll be sitting in the chair. Be prepared for it. Well, I'd rather be shot in the back rather than die in the electric chair. Do you still hold Mr. Weldon responsible for your conviction? And yes. If you had it to do over again, would you do the same thing? Yes. Are you afraid to die? Yes. I know the judge don't play around. The section woman. She's supposed to die tonight. Now look to me. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father. Oh, dear Lord, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> Quasium churum quasimus domine, mentibus nostris infunde, et qui angelo nunciante Christi filio tue incarnationium cognoguris, per passionium eras et crisium, et resurrectionis, gloriam ericamum, parandum Christum dominum nostrum. Amen. All Aphronobis, Sanctidea Genetrix, all Aphronobis, Santa Virgo Virginum, all Aphronobis, Santa Virgo Virginum, all Aphronobis, Pater Christi, all Aphronobis, Marta Divini Gracie, all Aphronobis, Marta Intermarata, all Aphronobis, Marta Amibus, all Aphronobis, Mountain Admiral. <laughs> Would be getting out. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out, man. Uh, you know. Well, Mr. Brown, how are you today? I'm just fine, watching all this boat and stuff. Look, uh, we've been on the road now for two days, and let me buy you breakfast before we get started again. Let's just go on in and uh, I'll buy you breakfast.
There's been a gang hit between the two crime families. The victim was shot 22 times and his head blowed off with both barrels of a double barrel shotgun. I was able to plant your identification on this man. That'll clear you. The man that escaped that courtroom, the possible electric chair, he's dead. Most of the time the mob don't do things this way, but they made a mess. Made a mess out of this victim to make it look like an amateur hit. So right now, you're in the clear. You're still under this uh, protected witnessing program. Look, uh, you're still under the witness protection program. So don't blow your cover. If I run into problems, I get back with you. Sheriff, this is Sergeant John Riker. I've heard a lot about him. He's one of those military guys. Yes, he has quite a record. He served three tours in Vietnam. Worked his all the way, all the way up to Master Sergeant before retiring. <laughs> There's no such thing as retirement. We're really glad to have you with us. You know, uh, Mr. Prada, I don't know that I can take uh, this farm life. I mean, uh, Mr. Robinson, he expects me to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, feed the hogs. He's going to teach me how to milk a cow. And, uh, well, they're going to start priming tobacco next week, and uh, I don't know that I can take it. Yeah, you'll be able to. It just takes a little while to get used to it. Once you get started, then you'll probably be able to fall right in there and do it. Shouldn't be a bit of trouble for you. Well, if uh, you'll show me what to do, well, we'll get started. Okay, you ready to do some hoeing?
Yes, I got your phone call. Come and see, Mr. Riker. Yes, I got your phone call. I've been reassigned. Well, we have reason to believe that Morris was uh, tied in with the mob. He was a young man. He committed suicide, and I'm down here to investigate. I'm down here to find out what the problem was. I graduated from law school, but I want to be an investigator. So I was assigned to be your state-appointed attorney. And I did a whole lot more than they could have done for you. You don't escape the elected chair unless you've got connections. I'm with the agency. You're a valuable witness. We won't get to the bottom of this. And, well, uh, you would be no good to us in prison. And, Definitely no good to us dead. Tell me about Mars. Tell me about Mars. I don't know that much about Mars. Mr. Brooks was first on the scene after the suicide. Now, maybe you can learn something from him. Let me tell you. There was a friend of mine. His name was Mars. He was a good kid. Good country boy. But you'd think that he would go down to the factory like I did and worked as a sweeper? Oh, no, no. He wanted an education. And I mean, he went to school and he finally did make it to the college. And let me tell you, nice guy. He went out and partied a lot. But he wanted to make big time. Like I said, he wanted to be his own boss in the world. He wanted to do his own thing. And he even got, I mean, some super jobs. I mean, took jobs selling cars. And also did, uh, you know, I mean, a variety of jobs. I mean, you know, blue collar jobs. I don't know, those things, I don't know, he still wasn't happy. They just didn't work out. I don't know, he just, I don't know, he just wasn't happy. And what do you think he finally did? <laughs> Let me tell you, this was a bad one. He committed suicide. Oh. Yeah. But let me tell you, I heard this gunshot. It was over the hill. And I ran up there. It was a frightening scene. And I looked up at his wife. And she was crying. And I looked down at him. And the man was dead. He shot himself. There was a dog there. What a horrible sight. He was eating his brains and lapping his blood. It was terrible. It was terrible. I never forgot that. It was a frightening scene. Really sad. It was really sad. I don't feel you know the whole story. It's true, Morris got that education. He liked to party. He got this lawyer's job with the firm. The problem was that the mob controlled the firm. 
He's in charge of tax invasions, trying to make uh, the wrongs right. He wasn't brought up that way, and he couldn't deal with it. He wanted out, but he knew that the mob had too much on him. They wouldn't let him out. He couldn't deal with it. He knew that his only way out was suicide. Sad things were at the end that way. It's a waste. the farms, the apartments, and everything else in the county. From the information I've gathered, you, you took a bullet in the leg from some madman in, in an apartment. Yeah, I took a bullet in the leg, but we still brought him in alive. You're a trained officer. Do you mean you couldn't shoot straight and bring that man in? Well, I shot at him, and I came close to him, but I missed him. But I had orders to bring him in alive, so I couldn't kill him. I've read the reports, and the man got time in a mental hospital. And he'll be out on the streets before we know it, and I believe you made a bad choice here. Huh? Hey, Howdy, how are you? Sheriff, the bank on Baker Road's been robbed. Bank robbers took off, took refuge in the housing project. It's got victims. Well, let's get out there. I want to be with my men. I want to bring this crook in alive. Now. Sorry that I didn't make it, but I had trouble with those Simpson boys. We got in a fight over the right of way over some land. And had to go down to the sheriff's office and explain what happened. Sounds like big trouble. How did it go? Well, uh, there wasn't any charges pressed. I mean, the sheriff saw my side. That's good. Sheriff, I give you a good compliment on bringing that man in. Now, I was out there with you. You've done a fine job. Well, I think my men deserve the credit for bringing this guy in. He's a good representative of the law in this community. He done a great job. I think you used poor judgment. That man was shooting to kill, and you should have brought him down. Hmm. I feel we did the right thing. We got a man in there with tear gas before something bad happened. Bob, you wasn't even in your jurisdiction. How did you know what went on? I wish I had been there. Jump in my case. Sorry about that. You I wasn't wish even I was there. there. What would you have done if you had been there?
see you throwing sticks today. Yeah, I got a lot on my mind. I just don't know. Well, what are you up to today? Fixing some good iced tea. It's not quite ready. Well, did you come down and invite me over? Yeah, I sure did. Well, I tell you, it's gonna go good today. I don't know. There's still some fussing about it, naming about it, and trouble's on the other side. Well, I wouldn't really worry about what anybody says. Well, uh, Tanya, this is my favorite time of the week, Saturday night. May I have this dance? Yes. Might not be a boring or a dance, but it's nice. Well, we've got a shine whitey for a guest. Yes. So it's not just two of them, this is the four of them. Yeah. And our company. They're our company. Well, so anyway, how's things going for you last day? Last day? Well, it's been hard. It's been rough. But I'm getting it. Well, it's just like this. I didn't make it yesterday because I had a full day's work. I tried to pick up what money I can, make just enough to keep going. I know it's rough. It's hard. You think it's hard for you? Well, it is. It's rough and it's hard for a woman. Well, I'm sure it is sitting here by yourself. And just got the dogs to keep I'll you company. You got a lot of responsibility. Oh, yeah, and I mean, getting out working, uh, well, it takes my mind off things. As long as I have you. It helps me appreciate what I have when I get off. And remember, though there be rain. I want to compliment you men for bringing these men in. They put up a struggle, but we brought them in. At least you didn't have to shoot anyone. I'm sorry, you misjudged me. The only time I've used a firearm is when someone's firing at me. I believe that an officer has the right to protect himself, especially when he's fired upon. Well, I can't argue with that. Well, I think you may have done a great job.
Sheriff Whittington, I believe we should have a sheriff's patrol in this county. Other counties have them. I think it would make our county safer. They'll have to be trained by off-duty officers because we don't want to organize a vigilante group. Would you men be willing to work with the volunteers? Yes, we would. Well, I'll talk with the other officers and see what we can do. Yes, it's really great to get up by the waterfront, watch the water flow. It's peaceful today, and it's not running hard. It gives me plenty of time to think. Think what I've done with my life, and what I should do with it, with the quality time that I have left. It can be confusing at times, but I don't know. I just feel that a person should uh, live their own life and do what they believe in and don't try to do what everybody else expects of them. But do what people expect when it's necessary, but yet live your own life. and uh, I'm starting a sheriff's patrol and uh, I'd really like you to join us and be part of it. Well, it's not that I don't want to, but I work on a farm. I'm saying these horses, they got to be taken care of and uh, well, I just got a big responsibility and I'd just like a little time to myself when I'm off. Yeah, well, I understand that. I'm, I'm sorry to hear it, but I understand it. It don't change the fact, Ron, I've been assigned to the area. I'm investigating. But I can swing into attorney any time that I'm called. I'm schooled at both. What I'm saying is, we need you as a witness more so than anything else. Now, we might have to make a change of location. Look, uh, I do not want to be relocated. I didn't think I'd ever adjust to this farm work, but I did. Made a lot of friends here. Met a lot of the neighbors. And what time I'm not working with the biker, I'm working with horses. I met a lady that I'm really interested in spending my time with. And uh, Sergeant Rock at the sheriff's office. Well, he asked me to serve on his sheriff's patrol, and at first, uh, I turned him down, but after reconsidering, I'm proud to be working with him and working with the community. Well, I'll give you my full support. I can help you a lot behind the scenes, but you're playing a dangerous game, a very dangerous game.
You know, uh, the information uh, you gave me on Will Simmons last week didn't match up with the information you gave me this morning. What are you going to give me this time? I'll give you this. I just want to stop by and compliment you on this heroic fight. I've been trying to catch these troublemakers in the act for a long time. I was working with the Sheriff's Patrol. I was on duty when we stopped them. You know, that's the way you get things done. So I had got a feeling that uh, you're the right man for the job. We've got enough evidence on these men to make these trespassing charges stick. And if they ever set foot in that establishment again, they'll go to jail. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Well, uh, we seem to be making progress. Just stay on them. Stay on them and see what we can do. You do your job. Keep up the good work in the county. Sooner or later, we're going to get a break. We're going to get a lead that going to lead us to the crime boss. I agree with you. I feel we're making progress and something's going to give. Whatever has to be done has to be done. It can be handled in different ways. But in time, in time, we might come out. These dogs hold this, and they like to chase the train. That train, you know, drag them under. Yes, I can identify the man. I don't know. That looks like him, but... I don't know. It's just... It's something about the eyes. I don't know, uh, I think the eyes uh, need to be closer together. Well, yeah. Look, uh, that looks like it. That looks like it. That's him. 
That's him right there. That's the man. That's the man I saw. You know, I agree. But if we could just find a suspect and turn him over to Big Chuck, that's all, that's all she wrote, boy. He'd take care of it. He'd get the answers. Mm-hmm. Look, I told you. We need the information now. Get the point. Today. We need the information today. You understand our position with this case? It's too important on us. Now is the day, right now, today. The information is needed today. Chuck, did you get the information out of him you needed? Yes, I believe I got all the information I needed from that fellow. I bet, I bet you did. Larry Wilson, as soon as I heard about that uh, law enforcement officer being killed, I felt that, that bullet was meant for me. So I went to the Sheriff's Department and I gave them the description of the hit man that I was supposed to testify against in Garden City. I just felt that if he was the same man, they'd catch up with him, and sure enough, they did. I felt they'd get him. What happened in Garden City, it was dark. He didn't know I was on the scene. I reported this to law enforcement officials. I questioned I went to the bar to relax my nerves. I saw him there. Oh, he was just a good old Joe, talking with other people, drinking his beer, eating a sandwich. And when he felt the time was right, he got his hard work and left. Well, he got away that time. He didn't get away here. They got him. They got him. Well, it looks like you got this situation all cleared up. I mean, you're a free man. A free man to be sheriff of the county and do whatever you want to do. I wish you the very best. And we got to the bottom of it. We got to the bottom of it. And our they want how's things going for you last day? Last day. Well, it's been hard. It's been rough, but I'm getting it. Well, it's just like this. I didn't make it yesterday because I had a full day's work. I tried to pick up what money I can. Maybe just enough to keep going. I know it's rough. It's hard. You think it's hard for you? Well, it is. It's rough and it's harder for a woman. Well, I'm sure it is sitting here by yourself. And just got the dogs to keep I'll you company. You got a lot of responsibility. Oh, yeah, and I mean, getting out working, uh, well, it takes my mind off things, and long as I have you. it helps me appreciate what I have when I get off. And remember, though there be rain.